Our speaker tonight is Irina Petrova Adamatsky, who is a member of the Royal, Photogra Royal Photographic Society and an affiliated artist at the Unconventional Computing Lab. Um, for those of you who attended UK Fungus Day 2020, we also had a talk from them then. Um, Irina has won a substantial number of awards and prizes, which are, oh, there's so many, I can't list all of them, but includes the Biffa 2021 um, and 2020 Science Category winner, uh, the Nature Golden Camera, and perhaps most importantly, the BMS UK Fungus Day 2021 photographic competition. Um, she is a fantastic photographer, an amazing artist, um, and I believe this is her first talk tonight, so it's going to be amazing. Um, without further ado, I'll pass over to Irina. So, hello, I'm Marina Petrova Damatsky. I'm an affiliate statist uh, in the University of West England. And um, this is my talk. I'm going to share my screen now. Hope you see it. It's fungal architecture from an artist's perspective. Uh, and I guess, firstly, I should talk about. It's uh, from scientific way uh, to explain what I mean. Uh, and uh, for the first, it's the disclaimer that I'm a photographer and artist uh, and I'm not a scientist. So I, I may not know all the technical details uh, and most of the photos you can see there, uh, they're made, made by me. I will follow the table of content. I might, but... I can't open the slide, I don't know why. Uh, so we'll start with fungal architectures itself. Uh, and about fungal architectures, fungal architectures is cross-disciplinary research project aiming to develop an integrative structural and computational living substrate with mycelium for the purpose of growing architecture. The consortium includes Architects Center for Information Technology and Architecture, Copenhagen, computer scientist, uh, biophysicist, University of West England, Bristol, McGorges, Utrecht University, and industry Mogos, May, Italy. Targets of this project, growing monolithic structures at meter length scale, functionalizing the mycelium networks to act as computing device. And uh, here's some photos I took uh, uh, for the exhibition. Uh, we had an exhibition in Bristol in December 2021. This is an artistic prototype of one of the potential fungal buildings uh, made by Dr. Nick Roberts. It wasn't colonized by fungus yet, but it was a good time. Background and motivation of this project. Um, excuse me, just need to, to remove it a bit. As a primary resource consumer, the building industry uh, faces uh, serious changes to reduce the environmental impact of current consumption practices. This applies to both uh, construction of the built environment and resource consumption during their occupation and use. Against the backdrop of this grand challenge, it's necessary to explore destructive approaches in how material is sourced, processed, and assembled to address the magnitudes of this challenge's sustainability. Uh, this also presents the opportunity to seek out new architectural opportunities uh, and objectives to embody new values. And here also a prototype of the dome, as you can see on the previous photo. Uh, this was made by Neil Phillips uh, for our um, exhibition. Geodesia of a dome is formed by two different sized triangles and uh, we colonize it during the exhibition. The second foot uh, on the right, you can see it, it's with Dr. Hu. Primary objectives of this um, um, project is uh, building upon prefabrication approaches, fungal architectures develops a live and mycelium structural substrate. The team also proposes uh, exploit to uh, computational capabilities of this living substrate by doping it with nanoparticles and polymers to make mycelium-based electronics. This combined structural and computational substrate will implement sensorial fusion and decision-making in the fungal 
electronics to support and steer cross and monolithic print buildings. Fungal buildings will grow and repair themselves, sense and adapt to the environment, which is very important. The firm resource balancing and connect to ecological system. Here you can see examples and prototypes of fungal gargement. Um, this were two photos of mannequins from the our fungal architecture exhibition in Bristol. Um, they were made by our team and the photos were made by me. Targets, breakthrough and innovations. Uh, biofabrication, cultivation of meter lens uh, scale structures through new growth and cultivation protocols for mycelium networks. Functionalization, changing the electrical and mechanical properties of the mycelium network. Computing, implementation of information processing on mycelium networks. Designing, development of design rules and construction logics together with the development of uh, architectural tools for design living architectures. Novel construction concept. Uh, designing and growing fungal architectures presents challenges to conventional methods for architectural representation and construction, demanding new methods and approaches. The team is in investigating a novel construction uh, concept to integrate mycelium composites with scaffold and reinforcement. Uh, this investigation is structured around four objectives. Development of automatic production of fifth and growth scaffolds is robotics. Studies of mechanical properties uh, to inform numerical models. Defining design rules uh, that integrate uh, spatial, structural and computational properties towards architectural objectives. Development of the persistent models uh, that couples uh, the living physical artifacts with the an active design model for steering process uh, for, of adaptations towards evolving and changing high-level architectural goals. This is one more photo of mannequin we took for our um, um, exhibition, fungal architecture. It's uh, fungal garment, mycelium, bond hemp, and fabric plastic. This will be smart uh, garment. Fungal biomaterials are becoming very incredibly popular in architecture and design. There has been a significant flourishing of projects over the last year. Using mycelium as a stabilizing compound for fibers from agricultural waste, new building elements can be pro produced according to the circular economy model and used in architectural construction to transform the construction industry towards greater environmental and economical sustainability. At the same time, research on these materials, and especially on fungal biocomposites, provides uh, knowledge that allows the materials themselves to inspire and transform architectural design. New research into these materials not only enables their use as building materials, but also inspires and influences the architectural design process, discovering and changing the properties of materials. Today, lots of teams are working on new fields to integrate of fungal biocomposites into a building industry and bring together science, art, and architecture. Here are more photos from our projects and our exhibition. This is fungal and soil pressure mapping, mycelium bone hemp, weight application test trick, uh, 3D printed foot, load application to different parts of the fungal and soil to simulate typical human loading and standing. Architecture since uh, 2016 has shown a significant turn towards material technology research for efficient biomaterials produced uh, with minimal carbon footprint and non-toxic, biodegradable and compostable. In particular, during uh, the past seven years, uh, there has been a lot of interest in fungal architecture in order to use the properties of mycelium as the main material to explore its various characteristics to develop original application for it. One more prototype of fungal building uh, by Dr. Neil Phillips. Uh, it was made in the laboratory. Oster layer uh, bio weld together mycelium. Uh, size uh, of the dome is about 50 on 50 and 50 centimeters. 
The morphological philosophical studies of fungi and their mycelium combined with deep understanding of their physical properties lays on the groundwork for architecture to visualize alternative future of the built environment. It goes uh, beyond the materials and built methods we follow. To the new ways we can perceive our building and uh, new morphologies and typologies and can emerge from this exciting combinations of fields. Bio, biomaterial company that produces mycelium insulation panels claims production of projects carbon negative sequestering at least uh, 16 tons of carbon per month. And mycelium is the way for carbon negative buildings, as uh, David Cheshire said. According to sustainability expert David Cheshire, mycelium could soon be used to insulate and fireproof building via bonding carbon. It's a naturally fire retardant. It's actually got better insulation properties than most standard insulations, and it's actually bonding carbon, he said. Uh, and this is one more photo from the exhibition, Fungal Architectures. Uh, it's a prototype of the building uh, by Nick Roberts. And um, as you can see, mycelium uh, boots with electrodes inside, so made by our team. It grows quickly and cheap to produce in custom bioreactor where sclerosia can be grown in molds and create usable products such as packaging and lamps. Its coal also can be recycled to make new materials, including leather and goods such as Milo, and this is in turn can be used to make bags and clothing. In May time, a wide range of mycelium composites material are under development. One more prototype, it's a uh, fungal vest, a photo of a mannequin, fungal gudgeon, mycelium bond hemp and fabric plastic uh, made by a team of UV. This can also be used to replace foam, timber and plastic for application, such as installation, uh, door course, panel and flooring and other furnishing according to this income. Mycelium uh, during materials have several key advantages. All traditional synthetic materials include their low cost, density, energy consumption, in addition to their biodegradability and low environmental impacts and carbon footprints, said Dizin. This is a prototype of uh, Fungal City. It's mostly like comic. And uh, the house was made with mushrooms, white mushrooms you can buy in Tesco and any other things. And we used uh, broccoli also for our exhibition, which exhibition. Uh, I think the plus of this is uh, that it's recyclable. And if you don't like your house, you can eat it. And now uh, this is uh, an artistic perspective of this project. Uh, on this photo, you can see exoskeletons of insects uh, and gonoderma made by Utrecht University. I has became an affiliate artist of an unconventional computing lab uh, in 2020. It happens because of my project, um, the X-Files Ecological Disaster in Industrial Wonderland. I started it in 2017 and it's about the worst aftermath of climate change and unsustainable future. This photo you can see, it's about uh, future war we made for ourselves. It's trusted robots and uh, some fungus. The X-Files ecological disaster in industrial wonderland. It's also one more photo for the same project. And uh, this is an overview for this project. The project, the X-Files Ecological Disaster in, in Industrial Wonderland, is designed to draw attention to the problems, problems of human influence on the environment, such as changing the genome of living organisms in order to obtain certain benefits for humanity, or the effect of radiation on the growth of animals and plants, climate change and environment pollution. And here it's not about uh, fungi, it's about uh, changing genome of uh, organism. You can see giant chickens' legs and uh, humans and biohazards in the future. Um, they're making crops or something. 
this is one more photo from this project. Uh, made it in 2017 in the forest on the field. Actually, I used a real mushroom and some moss and uh, I use um, macro flesh for this one. Uh, and it was made uh, during the thunderstorm. Uh, so it's a story. Uh, with this project, I like to demonstrate what could happen to our Earth in the future and what kind of legacy we could leave uh, after us. One more photo from the same project. Uh, we used a submarine painted uh, and some oyster mushrooms uh, to show, to make this uh, polluted environment. Uh, I used aroma sticks and uh, light that? sources of light uh, with my handmade filters. Uh, you can see the effect. Uh, my world is a universe of living technology. The world uh, where reality and fantasy harmonize and oscillates in unison with my thoughts where creations of science fiction worlds cohabit with samples of the animated world. Human society faces serious changes, uh, challenges to reduce uh, the environmental impacts of current consumption techniques. One more photo, uh, it calls after us. Uh, I created a big dam with rusted uh, cars and other things and I uh, found a pretty rare mushroom false funnel cap and I put some dust and made this photo to show the aftermath of climate change. Uh, this photo is called Upside Down. Uh, it's actually uh, another side of sunflower covered with some kind of fungi or slime mold. Uh, and humans uh, in biohazard uh, costumes trying to investigate it. I used uh, two sources of light, as you can see, the blue one and just the other one. One more overview of the project um, and the photo from the same series, so upside down. Against the backdrop, backdrop of this drama, it's imperative to explore alternative and conventional approaches towards uh, changing human affiliation of the world and creatures population it uh, to envision a paradi paradigm shift in how we imagine sourcing, processing and consumption of products and materials to shape this in a sustainable way. My artworks aim to shift the paradigm and style of thinking by bringing dreams into reality and reality into dreams. This photo is from the same series. It calls Unknown Planet. It's, of course, it's actually our planet. I used real soil. I found a dead dragonfly on it and some fungi. And what it was covered by funky, actually, I put some figurines I made myself and uh, some pieces of glass just to show people what it can look like. This photo um, you could see in the beginning, it's Ganoderma and um, some exoskeletons of locusts and it calls mortal aliens. And it shows that we actually all class are mortals and all the species, they just can disappear one day soon. Post-industrial air. A photo of parasol mushrooms I found in the forest. I also put some aroma sticks to make this polluted air and spray to make particles in the air and shower gel to show anything. I made some mushrooms myself for this from polymer clay and uh, figurines show alternative future. I hope you'll never come. The unconventional computing was made for Professor Domatsky. It's dried sail, saddle I found in the forest. And I, found, uh, I put some mushrooms there. And also you can see some mushrooms on the background. So I dried it and um, put some sources of light. It's actually three of those uh, with my handmade filters to make this atmosphere. Micronauts. Uh, it's a photo with a uh, grown in the lab, cardiceps uh, militaris, and um, I put some figurines of scientists as well to explore this. This photo is called Broken Angel. 
it's a photo of a dead dragonfly and beetles eaten by fungi. By the same time, the night before. Now I need to talk uh, a bit closer about my winning photo for the fungus day. I took the second place and it was uh, a big surprise for me. And this photo is part of this project. I made it in the forest near my house in Somerset. It was a very sunny day, but I used speed lights and handmade filters uh, to take a shot. I usually take them because uh, I like to control the light. It's important in photography. Here are some technicals uh, for this photo. I used Sony Alpha A7R4 and a low uh, 100 millimeter lens. And I also use synchronizer and some codex speed lights to take this photo, these filters. Uh, this is a photo from the backstage. So you can see the camera and the synchronizer with the lens and some dried saddles. Uh, they're safe and sound. And uh, the photo from the backstage, uh, three speed lights uh, and uh, my handmade filters with them. And this is a photo itself. It's uh, in raw and I sent it in raw for this competition without any retouching and took the second place. But usually for my projects, I make a little retouch and I'll show you now. This is what I post on my Instagram and I'm going to use it in future exhibitions. I retouched a bit. I put um, a bit different light because I was not happy with the light I have. And so I used uh, contrast settings uh, and just some brightness there. Now I'm going to show you some more photos. Uh, they're based on sci-fi movies and games. And the uh, illustration I also made myself. This is a photo of Wonderland. Uh, now this photo was chosen for the book uh, Thoughts of Unconventional Computing by Professor Andrew Adematsky. I can show you how it looks. Um, I used wire to make this effect uh, of, of flying keys in the air. After that, uh, unfortunately, of course, I can just uh, remove them in Photoshop, but all other effects were real. And this time I could control the light because I made this scene from the beginning, all the moss and all those things, small cards and small uh, caps, so uh, clocks, so they're all real there. Yeah. This was based on Rohama. I have just found some mushrooms in the forest and had those figurines I painted myself. And this is the photo I made with an alien queen. I'm a big fan of alien universe. It calls LV uh, 426. Uh, and it's, it's, it was taken with wooden ear. I was growing on some kind of a tree. I put some light and uh, the figurine into it. Sam. One more Warhammer photo, as you can see, by the same day. This photo is called Deep Down the Rabbit Hole, and it was taken in the studio. I brought this uh, Panther cap uh, to the studio and built this scene from the beginning, even a glass bottle. And the eyes um, from the dolls, they're all real. I put some aroma sticks inside the bottle to make this uh, magic effect of uh, floating smoke in the air. And the skeleton of uh, the thing was also real. It's a skeleton of dragon I made myself. Some more slime molds and fungus photos I have. This photo called Silent X, and it was made the same day I made uh, an alien series. Uh, I just thought those wooden ears, they look like some kind of alien thing. Uh, it was very impressive. And I usually don't want to take photos uh, straight away, like uh, anyone can do. It. I put some lights and uh, try to make magic with it. This is a photo of um, uh, lab grown cordyceps and uh, called it tentacles. I also put uh, three sources of light uh, to on the background, uh, red one and blue one, and one was in the middle and was normal one. 
the thoughts are from the same series. Uh, I think Kadritsips is very impressive for, to photograph for something like Alien, maybe from Lovecraftian universe. Uh, this photo was taken accidentally, and the funny thing about it, uh, it was taken on the Valentine's Day. I found this mushroom in the shape of heart in the forest, uh, scarlet elf cap and the wood lice and another little creature. And they were interacting uh, during all the time. I thought it looks amazing. I took this photo and I put it on my social media because I thought it's uh, very good for one testing. Next photo on the ocean floor. Uh, it was taken the same day, a bit different mushroom. I had a background with me uh, from the child's uh, sets uh, for handmade. I usually take them with me. And I also saw wood lice and uh, it reminds me about ocean floor and I took this. I thought it's pretty interesting. This is a photo of the bodies of slime mold. I called it martial landscape and uh, it was growing on a leaf. I have never could imagine that I would see this uh, fantastic world. I don't know how it looks on Mars, but I think if it would be plants on it, so they would like like this. The photo I took the same day. Uh, all those photos are uh, actually the results of uh, focus stacking. It's uh, the methods so when you take uh, a lot of photos, sometimes it could be 100 or even more photos, and then you combine them using Photoshop or any other application for it. So it can take days. And this is a photo of a stick insect. Uh, it was born dead. So it is still born insect on or dying autumn leaf. Uh, and it was giving life to a microcosm of surrounding like fungus feeding on remains and slime mold and green alga. And I thought it's very symbolic because each death uh, carries itself a hope for the birth of new life and new beginning. So this photo means a lot to me, like a hope. And this is a detail of the stillborn photos. Um, and you can see this stick insect covered with fungus. And it's a part of its egg. And uh, this is it about my uh, artistic uh, perspective. Uh, I hope you like it. If you have any questions, you can ask them. Fantastic. What, what a fantastically interesting talk um, and beautiful, beautiful photos. Thank you, um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I suppose one to ask while people type is, what's next? Uh, I'm going to continue to work for Unconventional Lab and uh, take photos uh, for future exhibition and uh, showing sustainable future. Uh, we have more projects in the lab, and um, I have a lot of projects on my own. I actually brought some things uh, to show you it's for the future exhibitions, and I made those motions myself. And um, my fingerings I usually use. They are this size. Very tiny one. As you can see, I also work uh, with another one uh, on conventional computing lab. It's uh, fungal intelligence. Uh, we made uh, some sculptures for the exhibition, like prototype, showing actually there is no a lot of difference between human brain and uh, mycelium. Oh, wonderful. Um, we have a question from Cam um who i can now presume to be a, a massive fan of your work cam asks where do you where do you usually exhibit in the bristol area um in the island in the islands and we found one more place near the bristol cathedral 
our exhibitions are usually free, so we will be happy to see everyone there. Wonderful. And do you have an exhibition coming up soon? Yes, we plan it uh, in, I guess, May or June. Wonderful. Um, are there any more questions from anyone? Ah, um, why, do you, why do you choose mushrooms to stage a scene photos and not, for example, plants? Um, as my husband would like to say that mushrooms were one of the first uh, creatures in the world. So they're, they were very ancient and um, as I told before, um, the mycelium is uh, pretty close to brain according to new studies. So I show them, and I think that they will stay after us. They, ha they have really amazing survival mechanisms. That's why I also choose insects as well. I love insects. Wonderful. We, we have a question from Linda um, who asks, um, how do you fund your work? Uh, oh, please excuse me, I don't understand it a little bit. I'm not a native speaker. Oh, no worries. Um, uh yeah, yeah. How, do, do you earn money from the work you do and if so how do you earn it uh yes um but not for this project um i feel like it's artist like a volunteer here just for my projects for my exhibitions and for uh upcoming photography awards here i just made another photos for commercial advertisement and other things wonderful we, we have um uh, in the chat, there's your website in the chat for anyone who'd like to visit it. Yes, um, I have it's uh, irinapetrova.com. Uh, uh, I think I should put it somewhere in the chat. It's, it's, it's been put in the chat. Um, uh, it's uh, Emma, I've, Emma Norman placed it into the chat. Um, we've got a question from Jane who asks Have you done any work with lichens? Uh, please excuse me. <laughs> So have you done any work with lichen instead of mushrooms? Um, no, no, I haven't. Um, how did you get into painting the small figures? It's, uh, it's quite difficult, no? Uh, yes, yes, I have uh, brushes uh, that size and just love to paint. It's uh, like zen kind of thing. 